Thanks, Mike. Um, so, as you know, uh, the NCAA experiment with the early signing day has uh, happened today. Uh, it's been an interesting process. It's definitely uh, changed the timeline, I guess, of recruiting. We're pretty excited about the group we have. We had uh, 18 guys signed today. Um, you know, a couple of the names are familiar guys from the past, but uh, we feel really good about our group. As, as we recruited this class, um, our philosophy has always been we move a little bit slower in terms of offering guys uh, and, and then, you know, trying to get guys committed. We, we, we really try to do our homework. Um, and we think the guys that we had signed with us today are really qualified. Um, we've made sure we know everything about them, and we truly think they're going to help us. We're excited about this group. Uh, across the board, we feel like we've, we met some needs. Um, we still obviously have a lot of work left to do. We've got a bunch of scholarships left, uh, and we've got a um, pretty solid board left for those few remaining scholarships that we have. So uh, we're excited about the group. We think this group is absolutely um, a Sun Belt quality group. Uh, in, in some cases, in a lot of cases, we think a lot of these guys could play at a higher level for sure. Um, and we think these guys really buy into our BAM philosophy. So we're excited about it. I think, uh, I think these guys are going to do some great things here in the not too distant future. Obviously, this, the, the sign date's not over. So we have, we have several guys in the state of South Carolina we're still on. The biggest challenge for us is now being the first year of FBS uh, of getting our program established. There's a lot of other Sunbelt teams and, uh, and Conference USA that come into South Carolina to take and some of those players that have been established more at that level. So we're still building our, I don't want to say reputation, but what we're going to become within this state. And so we've got some young men that, uh, that we are recruiting still that we hope that uh, will sign with us, but that is going to be our priority going forward. And, um, and it's always been our priority is to look inside first and go outside. And um, we feel great about the people that we did bring in. And there's going to be, we feel like there'll be at least one, hopefully two, maybe even three guys from South Carolina once this thing's out. Once this uh, signing date is done in February. Was 18, was that more than you expected to sign today? Uh, I know Jamie has talked about 12 to 15 in the past. Is, did you actually get more guys to commit than you thought you might? Um, I think we're right around the number we expected to be at. Uh, as this thing has played out, um, it's, definitely recruit it's definitely different recruiting as an FBS program. Um, but I think right around 18 is where we kind of thought we'd be. What does that leave you with this year? And because you're playing catch up with other FBS schools, are you trying to fulfill every possible scholarship offer that you have? Yeah, I mean, we're going to be smart with our scholarships. We don't feel, you know, we could technically go up to 30 this year if we wanted to. Um, but we would never sign a, a kid just to sign a kid. Um, I think, you know, just like us as coaches, we've kind of sorted through this early signing date. The players and the recruits are doing the same. So a lot of these guys that we're involved with and still on, um, a lot of them have said, you know what, I want to wait until the February signing day, um, which obviously we respect that and, and uh, we'll continue to recruit those guys. So I feel like we've got a really good nucleus of recruits left on our board uh, that will allow us to get, you know, a, a good amount more in that next signing date. And it's a three-day period. Is there a chance that anybody is added to this list in the next two days? I think so, yeah. There's one or two that are, are still out there right now that are kind of uh, weighing their options a if little bit. If it goes bit. well. Yeah. yeah, if it goes yeah. well for us. So it's fine. It's a possibility in the next couple of days you may add another For sure, yeah. Um, I see a lot of skill guys. Is that, was that an area you targeted, or you just happened to get a lot of guys that committed to Offensively, that was a big area to target. Uh, if you if you look offensively, there's uh, two quarterbacks on there, there's a couple running backs, three running backs, and uh, three wide receivers, two tight ends. So, uh, one of the areas uh, of improvement that we we needed overall, I think, as a team, was team speed, but specifically offensively, uh, trying to uh, get more speed, get more uh, athleticism, and so uh, that was our our big push offensively to try to get some multiple players at those positions. One to uh, get some depth, that was a, a, a big need, just trying to fill some depth at certain positions. And then two, just to try to find some guys that uh, uh, could help us win this league. And uh, that was a big issue on both sides of the ball. And uh, I'll also ask you about all these guys. Um, you end up playing a lot of freshmen this year. Um, uh, are there a lot of guys on this list that you think can also uh, play as freshmen? Well, 
um, not speaking on both sides of the ball, but I would, I would say I know we have a lot of opportunity for young people to come in, even the ones that are still listening. So there's a lot of opportunity to play early as a freshman. Uh, we, we feel like uh, we've got some good young nucleus coming back. Uh, but there are there are going to be roles that need to be filled in some way, and it all depends on how they come in and, and what their what their mentality is, and are they ready? But we do feel, as Corey mentioned, that these guys physically, athletically, uh, fit what we need to compete in this conference. Now, taking the time to learn and do the things that are necessary to be able to play. Great thing is, if you look on here, we got six guys coming in mid year. And so those guys are going to have a great chance there of putting themselves in a position to try to earn some type of playing time. Uh, now, one of them's a kicker, Massimo, so we'll see what he can do right, right away. But those other guys, you got a quarterback, you got a D lineman, you got a linebacker, you got a receiver, and you got a DB. Those are all areas of need where we could use a young person to come in and play. So that was specific. We were trying to get some mid year guys at some key positions, and Corey and his staff did a great job of. Of, of targeting some of those guys. So I would expect those mid-year guys to really have a great chance of, of, of coming in and, and going through spring ball and doing something positive. I guess, Corey, is there anybody on this list that you can pinpoint that you, you, uh, you, you think you maybe um, overshot your expectations to have gotten uh, as in this recruiting class? Is there anybody on the list that you're really high on? Uh, I mean, I think as I look at the list, there's a lot of guys that are kind of in that boat, to be honest with you. We were involved in some pretty serious recruiting battles on pretty much every one of these kids on this list against programs that we might not have been able to beat in the past as an FCS program. So being an FBS program really allowed us to recruit um, more highly recruited players. So, you know, as I look up and down this list, a lot of these guys had at least mid-major and in, in, in a number of cases uh, Power 5 offers that, that we were able to get. So I'm excited to get him here. I think what Jamie said about, you know, History has proven that if when we get guys in here in mid-year, they can they can contribute pretty quickly, and, and um, I'm excited to see what these mid-year guys can do right away. Uh, I would I would think those guys will have the greatest opportunity to really contribute early, just because they're going to be in our system with our strength coach, learning learning the offense, defense, and and, and doing those things. So um, ask me about those guys at the end of the spring, and then 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 we'll talk about the young guys. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think we've got Teddy. Teddy Gallagher is a JUCO guy. He's a four for three guy, though, yeah. so he'll be around. And then you have um, Tanks, a, Tank Walker, DB is a prep school guy, and then Wallace Collins is um, he was a high school qualifier, so he's also a four for three guy. Yeah. Um, and then Torrance is a uh, four for three as right. well. He's gonna be a sophomore. So, okay. When you say four for three, meaning four years to play three, they could still redshirt. Yeah. Whenever you can get a junior college that has that ability to redshirt, that makes a big difference. Um, because sometimes those guys just need that, that year to adjust to four-year school and, and doing those things. So as we looked at those kind of guys, that's what we tended to lean towards. Um, and, you know, with us having a number of scholarships left, I wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw some more traditional junior college guys in this next signing period. Yeah, I feel like, and Jamie, you tell me if you think I'm wrong, but I feel like our, our young core, we, we basically have a class and a half recruited as an FBS program right now. And um, I really feel like that class and a half is very good. Um, whereas a year ago, we only had a half a class really recruited as an FBS program. So in my opinion, speaking at least on the defensive side of the ball specifically, I feel like we feel good about our young core right now and we're not as much of in a, in a panic to bring in some older junior college guys. And it would, it would have to be a, spe a specific need uh, just because we have established now, um, he talked about that young core established where, the direction we're heading. And if there is a, hey, we've got to have a spot here, we would go after that need. But we felt like we could find that same quality type of player that could come in and, and fit the need as a, high, as a high school player. And that's why you saw us sign as many high school kids as we did and continue to build. Uh, but I, I do expect us to maybe sign one or two guys, maybe uh, two probably I would say would be uh, most likely here in the, in the next signing session to fit, fit a need here or there um, that uh, we know that we still need to try to get. 
and uh, but I would expect us to do that. And in, uh, any areas that you do feel that what's left out there right now after you sign these guys, what, what areas do you really think you need to get a few extra bodies? Oh, offensively, uh, it'll uh, we're going to go after some offensive linemen. Uh, most of our uh, most of our um, skill will be done. We might try to sign uh, one more wide receiver, possibly, or maybe one more running back. But uh, our focus offensively will be on uh, offensive linemen. I think defensively, the secondary is is a spot for sure that we're going to add some bodies. Um, you know, in the D line, we'll we'll add one or two guys there, and then the linebacker will probably be one more guy.